Hello everyone. Um, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. My name's Cameo. I'm a digital painter. And today I'm just painting this guilty pleasure art of a girl with some buns in her hair and a color scheme that I just really enjoy painting. It calms me down a lot. Which is why I'm painting this in the first place, because I'm really stressed about a lot of stuff right now. And, you know, I could feel a huge art burnout coming on. And as an artist, burnout is really frustrating and I wanted to avoid it as long as possible. So instead of forcing myself to come up with something new and something that was going to stress me out even more, I just told my brain, you know what, you, you can paint whatever you want. You can paint the same thing that you always paint and it's okay for now. And I've been trying to get better at letting myself do that, just letting myself paint the same thing that I always paint because, you know, it's it's the same thing I always paint for a reason. It, it makes me feel good. It, it's a very soothing thing for me. And I think it's really important to have something like that, just something that you can just go to in your in your art arsenal <laughs> so that when you're feeling really stressed or really burnt out but you know you need to keep making art you have something that is just really relaxing and that maybe doesn't cure the burnout but you know doesn't add to it either and when I notice that I am starting to feel stressed and that the idea of making art just is like a thorn in my side. Um, I try to make sure that the art process is as enjoyable as possible. I make sure that my my desk is clean and not as cluttered as it usually is. Um, sometimes I have a candle going or I have some incense burning and I just I just make sure that making art is a really relaxing and safe space rather than another stressor. And this helps me a lot um, just knowing that when I'm feeling out of control in other areas of my life, I can sit down and be in control of what my hands are creating and what my brain is creating. Um, that really helps to calm me down. I, don't, I know it's probably not the same for other people, but for me, this is what helps. So moving on to talk a little bit more about the painting itself, now I'm just adding in some messy line art. This helps me placing colors and um, I, I blend it into the actual shading and it just gives me this really nice painted look. Uh, this is kind of how I've always done it. I know some people don't use this kind of line art at all, but this is just what works for me. I like to add all of my flat colors underneath this line art and my base shading underneath the line art and then when I go to blend in the shading I make a layer on top of the line art and that helps me to blend the line art in and get the painted look that I usually go for. Now that the line art is finished, I go in and start adding in the flat colors. Um, I decided to go with a purple, blue, and pink color scheme for this one. Like I said before, it's just a very soothing color scheme for me. It's some of my favorite colors and I just love painting these. In fact, if you go and look at my DeviantArt page, you will find that most of my gallery is in this color scheme um, and the ones that aren't stick out a lot. So it's definitely cemented itself as my go-to. I've been trying to work on speeding up my process, so I leave the hair, the parts of the hair that are overlapping with other colors, I just leave those and I erase everything that is um, on the outside, if that makes sense. And then I go in and I fill in the skin and I clean up the skin um, so that the hair is just, you know, where it needs to be. And that's kind of the approach I take with the rest of the flat color, is just erasing things that um, aren't going to get covered up and then leaving things that are going to get covered up. Here I fill in probably my favorite color of the entire piece, that super bright saturated blue. And um, I start off with the eyes, I start off with that purple that I marked down there, but eventually I realize that there's just, it's so 
purple heavy on the on the top in the face so eventually I change her eyes to the same color as her lipstick um, and now I'm just filling in the bow and her shirt with a super dark blue so that it looks black once you add the shading um, I try to not use straight black or straight white on anything because I find it looks re less realistic um, so instead I just use either a really light color or a really dark color so that once you add the shading it, it kind of tricks the eye into looking black or white. And now I'm going in and adding in the base shading. Um, I realized a couple seconds in that this color was way too dark but I just went ahead and finished off shading in the skin before I changed it to a much lighter color. and. I ended up darkening the line art as well so that it all kind of meshed together a little better. And now I'm just going in and cleaning up where I overlapped with the hair um, and making sure those piercings are super clear. And there I darken up the line art and lighten up the shading and I just go in and find some spots that I missed and clean those up and add in the shading there. And then I move on to adding some gradients into the hair to make it look a little less flat and incorporate the pink and blue into that huge block of purple. And here I start adding in the base shading to these buns, and I'm not entirely the best at buns. Not, not, not entirely. I, I am not the best at buns. I'm not entirely sure why my brain was like, hey, you should draw buns. But you know, they look recognizable. <laughs> uh, you look at them and you go, yeah, she's got buns in her hair. So I'm not too upset about it. Um, and in fact, I'm quite pleased with how they turned out. Um, and now I'm just adding shading to the rest of the hair, making her bangs look like bangs and, you know, making it look less like one giant hair helmet, even though when I start blending out the shading it looks like a hair helmet anyway. But you know, what can you do? <laughs> and here I change the eye color to that blue just to bring more cohesion into the face, uh, and I start adding the shading into the lips. And lips are some of my favorite things to paint. Uh, they were one of the first things I kind of figured out. So they're just really soothing for me um, and I know that's kind of weird but you know I think every artist has their favorite thing to do and mine is just lips um, eyes are kind of the opposite I, I am not very good at them there are some digital painters who just make these gorgeous beautiful lifelike eyes that you can just you know you can see like the character looks almost alive and I am not at that level yet <laughs> um, but hopefully hopefully soon uh, and here I start blending out the shading, and I was going to try out a new brush in this painting, but just these first couple passes with it, I realized it was not handling the way I like my brushes to handle. So I deleted that layer of shading and went back to my go-to brush, which is uh, this textured brush with these little dots in it, which I think are super fun and super cute. And so I use this brush for the entire painting, uh, and I think it fits really well just with the mood. Like, you can't really see the dots when you zoom out, but when you zoom in you can see them, and it's just this fun little surprise. Uh, and that nose looks really wonky for a while because I didn't realize that it was super wonky, but I do fix it eventually. <laughs> And about here is where I realize that the nose looks as weird as it does, but I still don't get to fixing it because I try to pretend it doesn't look that weird and I just try to ignore it, which I think is something I do entirely too often. But I, I do go in and fix that eventually. I just try to pretend it's not a problem for a while. Um, I can't remember how long I wait to do it, but uh, for now I just go in and I keep blending, blending out the shading on the hair, or the face, good grief. Blending the shading is honestly my favorite part of the painting process. I just think it's really cool to see these flat blocks of color just blend together and become so smooth under your brush. And so it's the part that generally takes the longest for me, but it's also the part I enjoy the most. Um, so I don't mind that it takes the longest, but it is kind of monotonous. So uh, you might find that I'm repeating myself a lot through this entire narration now, but you know, what can you do? It's kind of all the same thing over and over. Just picking colors and blending them out and picking more colors and blending them out. And here's where I finally fix that nose. Yay! <laughs> and I go into the other side there and 
now it actually looks like two halves of the same nose. <laughs> And now I'm going in and blending out the liner under the chin. This is always a part that I blend out because I think it makes the that area look really realistic. Um, and honestly, under the chin is one of my favorite places to blend. I know it's super weird, but like it just, I don't know, I just think it brings the whole piece to life once you get the, the shading of the head on the neck. And here I'm doing the ears, and I honestly hate painting ears. They are so weird and they don't make sense and they have too many curves and it's just, they're an ordeal, but these ones weren't that bad. Um, so I'm just going back to under the head, uh, but not quite the chest area. And I think this turned out a little bit too dark, but uh, it looks okay at the end. So I don't really bother to finish it or fix it. I do finish it. <laughs> that's, that's why you're watching this video is because I finished a painting. So now I'm going in and doing the chest and collarbones, and I just let myself be super messy with this part. You know, it's not in, it's not a focal point, even though there is so much skin there. Um, you know, I try I try to have the face be the focal point. So I just let myself be really loose and blend everything out adequately, but you know, not worry if it was hyper blended or not, like I do with the face. <laughs> uh, and here I just go in and blend out the shirt and it ended up looking a little bit too blue at the moment so I just try to bring in some more of that dark shading from the shoulders and here I go into the bow because the shirt didn't take as long as I was expecting it to <laughs> uh, this bow was really fun um, you know the the pink liner I had to cover that up somehow because otherwise it was gonna look really weird and so I you know, this was just a fun time for me to practice covering up the line art and making things pop and have contrast without having, you know, this line art there. And I think it's not perfect. I, I definitely could work on it, but I, I do like how it turned out. And here I finally start on the hair, which definitely took the longest. Well, maybe it didn't take the longest. I might be making that up. But it felt like it took the longest because I... It's really frustrating. I used to be really good at painting hair and I always liked how my hair turned out. Uh, and then I got better at painting other things and my hair painting just kind of stagnated and moved back a little bit. So now I'm not as happy with how I paint hair as I am with how I paint other things. Um, Especially in this painting, she kind of ends up looking like she's wearing a hair helmet, but you know, there's there's not much I can do about that right now except keep practicing, and I definitely plan to keep practicing, so for now it's okay, and you know, it looks like hair. It's on her head, and your brain reads it as hair, so it's not as huge of a deal. So I just keep going with blending that out and, you know, making sure it looks passable, <laughs> it looks like hair. Um, until until I get to a point where I'm satisfied with it, which takes a little bit and I feel like narrating the whole thing is kind of pointless because I'm just doing the same thing over and over. So I'm gonna hand it over to the music for a little bit and come back once I get to the background. <laughs>
Okay, so I know I said background like I was doing this huge grand thing, but it really is just a very simple background. I start off with that pink rectangle that I ended up putting on the wrong layer at first, and I add this really subtle, well, not really that subtle, but I add this gradient, and I lighten it up to make her stand out a little bit more. And then I go in and add a couple color dodge layers, and I kind of have to play around with this for a little bit to find the right color, but eventually I settle on that blue, and I pull up an airbrush and add some color dodge to the hair, which kind of contributes to the hair helmet look, but, you know, what can you do? Um, and I add some to her lips and then to her eyes, just to make those pop a little bit more. And with that, the painting is pretty much done. Oh, just this, uh, just this bounce light. But uh, other than that, the painting is pretty much done. So if you enjoy watching me paint, don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell for notifications, and I will see you in the next video.